Okay, so it is approximately 6.20. We're here for a public hearing. 6 o'clock, Thomas Doherty doing business as Popcorn Noir. Application for annual all-alcohol restaurant license. Change from seasonal to annual. Um, just for the record, um, we have a temporary appointment of Judith Twist to our licensing board um, basis, um, based effective on January 15, 2013. To replace our chair, Raymond Redfern, during his absence. Um, this is from the mayor, certifying that Judith Twist is qualified to perform the duties which would be required, and that he makes his designation solely on the interests of the city of East Stamford. Um, make a motion that we open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. So, just give me a couple minutes. State your name and address for the record. My name is Kristen Davis. My home address is 18 Pepin Ave, East Hampton. Um, my business address is 30 32 Cottage Street, Popcorn Noir. I am co owner along with Thomas E. Doherty. Thank you. Um, so, why don't you just give us a brief summary as to um, what your business is all about and how you've gotten to the point that you're at right now? Okay. Okay. The, the process that you had to go through. Yes. Um, Popcorn Noir is a restaurant. It is a bar, a movie theater, and a community venue for everything from arts and private parties to events for um, local filmmakers and musicians. We opened a little over a year ago in October of 2011 and expanded to double our size um, with a full restaurant and small outdoor patio um, this year, well, last year, <laughs> in August of 2012. Um, we started with a beer and wine seasonal license and through encouragement by the licensing board and um, other avenues, we changed our license to a full liquor license. Um, that was seasonal and are now hoping to secure an annual um, all alcohol license. In order to receive that license, as none are available because of the quota system, um, we have been through a number of steps um, and processes that include um, an, a letter of endorsement from the local licensing board that was signed um, by the city council and then mayoral approval. It then went to the state level and was a bill was supported by Senator Napick and um, Representative John Sidek that um, sent a bill that would allow us an annual license through the House, through the Senate, back to the House, and then ultimately for gubernatorial approval um, at the state level. That has all been secure and we return now here to our local licensing board to ask that you approve our application so that we can send that to the ADCC um, and secure our annual license. Okay, thank you. Judy, just for your mm -hmm. information, this is the, the essentially the decree that came from the, that is signed by the governor stating that um, it's gone through all the necessary channels in order for the applicant to come back to us. All right. Um, we've also, I, I believe we've also gotten confirmation um, based on a, a conversation that we had had previously about um, handicap accessible um, facilities. Um, the uh, building inspector has been consulted and he has stated that um, at this point, based on everything that you've done in the building um, is in conformity. Um, certainly if there were other major renovations to be done, which of course you would have to you know, apply for a building permit, um, that may change in the future, which I believe you're already aware of. But um, that, that issue had come up in, in by another member, um, but it, it seems to me at this point that your 
in compliance. And if you're in compliance with the building department, well, um, I don't think the licensing commission would say otherwise. Um, just a couple things I wanted to bring up. Um, outdoor dining. Um, could you explain to us exactly how that's going to work? Mm -hmm. We have a small outdoor patio. It is fenced in with a gate. Um, it has three tables for a maximum of 10 seats. Um, we do serve food and drinks in that outdoor area, but along with health code um, compliance, there is no smoking in that area. Um, it is attended by the staff as well as has two windows that look directly behind the bar and behind our cash wrap service area as well as directly into the restaurant. It's illuminated on either side by the appropriate exit um, signs as per the fire department. And the reason for the gate? Um, the gate is to control the access of alcohol and for security reasons. We, we close the, the gate, the fence, yep. yep. Okay. Um, it fences and closes that area off so okay. that we can secure that area so no one can take alcohol beyond that. Then why have a gate at all? Is it an egress issue? Um, I'm not really sure why. It was just recommended by one of the ABCC inspectors. Oh. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, the gate will have a lock on it? Um, no, it's not that kind of gate. It's just a little garden gate. Okay. three tables? Yes. Now, the area that is, and this probably is a stupid question, but the area that's being fenced in, mm -hmm. where the outdoor garden is, is part of the property that is owned by the owner of the building? Yes. This isn't on anyone else's property? No. It's also walled off on three sides by our building, the kitchen, the restaurant, and then another brick portion of the building. So those are all hall, tall. So the only real opening to the outdoors mm -hmm. is through the gate. Yes. So someone could conceivably take a drink, walk out the gate, go for a swim in the pond. No, we have staff to prevent that happening. Okay, good. So the 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 outdoor dining area will be constantly supervised. Always, yeah. Okay, so we have your checklist. Uh, Judy, do you have any questions? No, I was just concerned about the outdoor dining also, but it sounds like it's fenced in, so that's good. So there's not going to be a bar out there? No. So you're going to go out there to sit down and be served? Yes, exactly. You sit down, you have food, you have a cocktail, you know, ladies come and have lunch. We often have a lot of older ladies groups that come and mm -hmm. they have a, a small craft of wine mm -hmm. while they enjoy a salad and a sandwich. And you've already operated this? Yes, we've been oh, operating it. So the it. fence is up and all that. Yeah, we've been <coughs> operating it as is since uh, we received our license back in August. Your, your seasonal license? Yes, yeah. yeah. We've never had any complaints. We've never had uh, the police called or anybody for any issue uh, with the neighbors, nothing. Mm -hmm. um, it's all done in a polite, respectful manner. We're conscientious of noise and things like that back there. What are your hours? Um, our hours... They change depending on the season. Mm -hmm. um, right now, as we move into winter, um, we tend to be a little more restricted on our hours. Um, but typically, we're open seven days a week um, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. for lunch. We reopen at 5, and then 5 until about 11 p.m. most nights of the week, um, occasionally later mm -hmm. on the weekends, or when we do special events like New Year's parties, things yeah. like that. Um, we do kids' movies on the weekends in the movie theater, and that schedule changes as well. We do brunch on Sundays. We're there a lot. <clears throat> and I assume that servers have been, you know, have taken safe serve courses. We went through Spiffy after, um, yeah, yep, yep. they were here at a few licensing board meetings ago. Um, all of my staff that did not have current um, uh, certifications did go through the Spiffy program in Northampton um, and had great things to say about it. <laughs> we encourage everyone to do it. Yeah. Good.
I'm still a little stuck on the gate. I mean, I like the idea of the outdoor dining. I think that that, you know, I mean, if, when we when we look at, as far my impression, at least the way I interpret what the licensing commission is supposed to do, is to confirm that someone who's receiving a license is entering into a economically viable enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would think something like outdoor dining would increase the economic viability of your enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have no problems with the um, with the outdoor dining at all. Um, I just don't. Um, you know, I guess I would like to see maybe how high is the fence all the way around. Okay. It's only on it's one only wall. On one wall. No, no. I mean, all, all the way across. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, and yeah. The, yeah. the gate is the same size. The main reason for the gate is as a deterrent because we do have a lot of teenagers that go back through there. Um, that's what I don't understand. Why is the gate a deterrent? I would think a gate would be inviting. Oh, well, it's more just to say, hey, this is the edge of the property and this is not an area for right. people to be back here unless they're, right. you know. Parked. And of course, even if there wasn't a gate, someone wanted to get in or out, they could jump they the just, fence. Well, well, no, it's there's no lock or hinge. No, they no, just no, no, swing I, them. But right. they could, yeah. Well, I'm saying if you could put a lock on it, yes. it would sort of be a little bit, it's kind of like, you know, what would be the point? Yeah. Yeah, it's locked. <laughs> we'll jump over it. Exactly. And if yeah. somebody wants to go for a swim in the pond, they're probably just going to jump over the fence. <laughs> like, yes. I mean, I'm being sarcastic, obviously, yeah. but I mean, it's just yeah. the gate seems, yes. you know, um, it almost seems inviting for someone to go. Okay, well, we've had the cocktail. Yeah. Let's, you know, take a stroll and it's a nice night. And look at the pond, you know. Yeah. I guess one suggestion I would make um, would be maybe a sign okay. is put there that you know, and I, I think you probably already have signs, no alcohol yeah. off the premises. Yeah. Um, it would be really, I think it would be a very good idea that you would put a sign there that says, you know, no, no patrons, no alcohol beyond this point. Gotcha. You know, okay. you don't even want them go there, going out there without alcohol. Gotcha. Would you agree okay. with that? Oh, that is an area that we use for smoking. So we do have okay. um, patrons going back there, but all alcohol is left inside of the fence. The reason we, we've done that in the past is to prevent people from, you know, gathering in the street and mm -hmm. causing problems there. Um, You'd rather them smoke in the back than smoke in the front. Exactly, yeah. And then, you know, we have places for them to dispose of the cigarettes as opposed to throwing it in the street and, you know. Yeah, no, I, I you know, I... It is, it's a it's actually because it's not on there it's a big open garden area um, it's about 50 feet back from the then slope to the water line there's parking there there's trees it's all manicured and floor flowers are planted all around it and right, right. the barbecue is back there right. um, so that space is we use it but we don't allow any alcohol beyond the fence that's right. just open garden and I you know I don't want to repeat myself so it, it sounds like it's very rare that there's not a employee back there when there are people back there. Exactly. Yes. I still would like to. I would still like to see a sign. Sign. Okay. You know, right at the gate. So if someone's going out to have a cigarette, they at least see the sign and say, "Okay, you know, there is no alcohol beyond this point." Okay. We'll get a sign. Yeah. Sure. Now, when you had your seasonal license, mm -hmm. did you have this outside dining? Mm -hmm. And did you have to come to the board and have that outside dining approved? It was approved in our last application it was for the seasonal. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. Part of it. so yeah. it's nothing new. It's not. Yeah. It's also been inspected by the ABCC. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like it's an issue. Well, I, I Different from. No, I, this is not. This is not. Seasonal. No, it's not it's like not, this is yeah. a radical change in right. what is already existing. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Well, Karen prepared all the paperwork, so and I went through it twice. Um, your checklist is all there. Your announcements are all here. Um, your notifications to the abutters. Your check. If you 
you get this in tomorrow, did they give you some idea of when they think they'll turn it around? They expect that it could be done next week, early in the week, so we would have that in place okay. um, when we reopen in the 1st of February. Okay. All right, if you don't have anything further? No. Okay. Uh, I would make a motion that we approve the legislative license to Popcorn Noir. That's a motion. I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. You're good. We're not going to give it to you right now. Okay. Okay. I, I'm going to talk to Barbara first. Okay. Okay. But I think we're good. Cool. Okay. Do you want me to stop by to pick it up or do we want to have the city mail it? Whichever. No. Who do you want to trust it in to mail? I want you to mail it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what I want you to do is call me okay. sometime tomorrow okay. because I'm going to come down and I just want to have a discussion with Barbara gotcha. on it um, just to make sure that everything is, is good. Gotcha. Um, Perfect. And uh, we should be good to go and get it in the mail tomorrow. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Make a motion that we uh, close the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Oh,